Welcome back everybody to our introduction to quantum optics course. Today we want to discuss how to derive the dynamical equations for the density matrix uh, of the two-level atom. And these are the so-called optical block equations that we want to discuss in this density matrix form and really see what is this all buying us uh, instead of the Schrödinger formalism that we used so far to describe the dynamics in the two-level system. So let's get started. So one very elegant way, of course, of calculating the time evolution of the density operator of the density matrix would be just by using von Neumann's equation written down here. But let's take a more pedestrian approach. Let's do this more by hand to get a little bit of the feeling for the time evolution of the system. So let's say we would be in a pure state for the system and we wanted to calculate for the density matrix element row row 1 the time evolution. So we want to know the rate of change of row 1, 1 row 1, 1, that's just in, uh, if you have a pure state, that's just C1, C1 star, where C1 and C2 are the coefficients in front of the state vectors 1 and 2, describing our pure state psi. So we have now the time derivative of C1, C1 star, and uh, then we just, of course, use product rule, and we get C1 dot C1 star, C1, C1 dot star. And now the question is, of course, what is this C1 dot, what is this C1 dot star? Well, remember in the uh, earlier lectures using Schrödinger equation, we had actually derived the differential equations for C1 dot and C2 dot. So now actually I can just take our result, our earlier result that I've just written down here again for you, and now we just have to insert this here into this amplitude C1 dot. This is just I omega 0 half times e to the i delta t times C2 of t. And the corresponding form I can also plug in here now for C1 star, just a complex conjugate of this equation. Right? So um, let's just do that. And uh, then we see we get here terms of the form, if we put in C1 dot, we get terms of the form C2, C1 star. Well, C2, C1 star, that's just the density matrix element row to 1. And C1, C2 star, that's just the density matrix element row 1, 2 that appears now here in this equation. So now we are a bit further in our time evolution of row 1, 1. And now we're going to do the same trick that we used actually in the Schrödinger picture to get rid of this e to the i delta terms that you can see here in this differential equation. So we're going to transform to the rotating frame of light. to rotating frame of light. By introducing these tilde variables, so in this case, rho 1, 2 tilde would be just e to the minus i delta t rho 1, 2, and rho 2, 1 tilde would be just e to the plus i delta t row to 1. And this is exactly the same transformation that we did for the pure state case, now just applied to the off-diagonal density matrix element. So now we're in the rotating frame of the light field. We have to remember that. That's going to be important when we discuss the consequences, the dynamics of these equations. But now we have a very compact form of writing the rate of change of the population in the ground state being coupled to the off-diagonal kind of density matrix elements row 1, 2 and row 2, 1 tilde uh, through the Rabi frequency omega 0 in our equation. Now you can do exactly the same thing now for all the other density matrix elements. And now this will give you four equations, four differential equations for row 1, 1, row 2, 2, row 1, 2 tilde, and row 2, 1 tilde. Now, if you take a closer look at these, they are actually not so different from each other. And uh, there's a reason, of course, for that, because the density matrix is a mission. Uh, so we know that row 1, 2 is just row 2, 1 star, complex conjugate. And we also know that the sum of row 1, 1 and row 2, 2 has to be 1. So all of these four equations aren't independent. We have two constraints, so we can actually reduce them to two. So let's go step by step in reducing them. Well, the first thing you see actually in this differential equation for row 1, 2 tilde, that's just the complex, complex conjugate of the differential equation for row 2, 1 tilde. Okay, so that's really just the same equation written down here for these two off-diagonal density matrix elements. And of course, this has to be the case because we remember that row 1, 2 tilde, that's just row 2, 1 tilde star. So this is just 
the complex conjugate of this equation. So really the same thing. Yeah? So we can already cut out one equation here and arrive uh, at three differential equations that we have to uh, look at. Now one advantage of using the density matrix formalism is that we can really bring in something that we weren't able to bring in in a consistent way in the Schrödinger state formalism. And this is a damping of the system. Now we haven't talked a lot about that and I'm going to go a little bit, skip a little bit ahead in telling you of a few of the phenomena that can happen in this two-level system before we actually have a firm footing on what these actually are. But let me just describe the following process. So what can happen in an atom that is that you're in a state two, in an excited state of your two-level system, and uh, normally what can happen is that this state will actually decay back to the ground state. Now this could happen due to several reasons. It could happen, for example, because two atoms collide with each other and de-excite. It could also happen that we have a process, again we didn't discuss this yet, a process called spontaneous emission, where actually the atom decays to the ground state and radiates a photon to conserve the energy. So this would be, for example, spontaneous emission where the atom decays from the excited state to the ground state uh, and radiates a photon. Again, we haven't talked about what photons are, what spontaneous emission is. We're all going to do this in a much more concise way when we quantize the electromagnetic field. But let's just try to capture these processes in the semi-classical equations of motion. So they're going to lead to some damping. They're going to lead to an excitation rate or de-excitation rate of the excited state by, let's say, some rate gamma. So there's an exponential decay of the population in state 2 into state 1 with a rate given by gamma. And this then leads, according to our time uncertainty relationship, this will also lead to a broadening of the excited state level to acquire a width h bar gamma. Remember we had this delta E times delta T uncertainty relation and if you have a finite lifetime for the excited state then this will lead to an energy broadening, broadening according to our energy time uncertainty relationship. Okay so now let's try to try to see how we can incorporate phenomenologically this decay into our optical block equations, into these equations for the density matrix elements. Well uh, the rate of change of population in the excited state, we said, well, we're going to have just a rate gamma by which atoms from this state, row 2, decay into the ground state. So this can be just modeled by introducing a term minus gamma row 2, 2 here. Now, of course, if population is removed from the excited state at a rate gamma, then we have to add that population to the ground state again uh, in our system to accommodate this population that is reduced in the excited state as, as it has to appear back in the ground state again. Okay, so this just kind of conserves probability in our system. And now we have this off-diagonal element and remember this off-diagonal element that was just norm C1 times norm C2 and if the population decays with the rate gamma then the coherences which are just proportional to the square root of uh, um, C2 squared, norm C2 squared, then those off-diagonal elements are going to decay with a rate gamma over 2. So you have minus gamma over 2 rho uh, 1, 2 tilde here. Okay? So this is just an ad hoc phenomenological way of introducing a damping, this spontaneous emission process, into our system. Decay of population from the excited state into the ground state, where it leads to an increase of population and a dampening of the off-diagonal coherences by a rate gamma over 2, uh, corresponding to such a spontaneous emission damping of our two-level atom. Okay, so let's put this all together. And now I've written down the optical block equations now in this form, including the damping. So you see here the plus gamma rho to 2, minus gamma rho to 2 term, and minus gamma over 2 rho 1, 2 tilde form here. Now let's simplify this even further. And in the next step, we're going to make use of the fact that rho 1, 1 plus rho 2, 2, that always equals to 1, meaning that, again, these two equations are not independent from each other. They basically tell us the same thing, and we can express them by one equation. And what I'm going to do now is introduce the so-called inversion of our two-level system. So W is the inversion. It's the difference of population in the excited state minus the population in the ground state. So if you have your two-level atom here, 
state 2, state 1. You have some population in the ground state, some population in the excited state, given by row 2, 2 and row 1, 1. Then the difference of those populations is just the so-called inversion, row 2, 2 minus row 1, 1. So now the differential equation, the time evolution, the rate of change of this inversion, that's just going to be the difference of this equation here minus this equation here. So we already have everything we need. And now we can write all of those Bloch equations, these three equations, we can again summarize into two equations, one for the coherence, the off-diagonal elements, and one for the inversion. And this is really the only thing we need now to proceed. And now we can just directly go ahead and for any initial state, calculate the time evolution for the two-level system in this density matrix formalism with damping. So that's really something new that we've been able to establish here. We're able to describe the two-level system with damping in the system created, for example, by spontaneous emission processes. And we're going to see how that changes the dynamics compared to the kind of two-level system without damping in the Schrödinger formalism that we discussed already. All right, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.